Hey, what's going on, guys? Well, happy Thanksgiving. It is Thanksgiving Day, and to uh, to celebrate, I am enjoying a very special cigar, something I've been looking for for a long time. This is the uh, Fuente Fuente Opus X Lost City. All right, this is among the uh, world's most sought-after cigars. It is an expensive cigar, coming in at about thirty dollars a piece. Generally speaking, you see these in like boxes of ten for like three hundred to three hundred twenty dollars. Sometimes you'll see uh, stores sell these as singles. But very limited amount that are uh, produced and, um, like I said, extremely sought after. This is one of the cigars that was on my cigar bucket list, cigars I, I really wanted to try. And I've been looking for one of these for about a year or so. A lot of times people get these and they just save them. They stash them away, they throw them in the humidor, they let them age, and they just increase in value. Um, this one I happened to get into a trade. I got two of them. One which I'm enjoying today because it is Thanksgiving, and the other one that I'm going to let sit in my humidor for a while as well. Maybe next Thanksgiving I'll have the other one. But uh, this is their double Robusto size. Um, they do have a, a, a variety of different sizes. The double Robusto is just a little bit larger than the regular. It comes in at 5.75 inches by 52 ring gauge. All right. And uh, the wrapper here is a, a Corojo wrapper, um, Dominican tobacco for the binder as well as for the filler. Now this cigar actually has a really interesting story behind it. It's called The Lost City because the tobacco that's used in this was also used in the film The Lost City, 2005 uh, Andy Garcia film. Very good movie. I highly recommend watching it. Um, but how the story goes is they needed to have a, a scene with a bunch of tobacco in the background and it wasn't available, so the Fuente family specifically grew this tobacco for this movie and for these, uh, the scenes that they needed. And, uh, of course, it was a limited, you know, little run of this, uh, tobacco. It's aged for five years and so on and so forth. But it's just kind of an interesting story behind it. That is why it's so limited. Um, and that is, of course, why it's called The Lost City. So, uh, I got my later out here ready to go let's get this cut up and then uh, get it uh, get it started here I'm very excited to try this been waiting a long time for this uh, particular cigar so there's my uh, my cut taste a little uh, spicy on the uh, the dry puff there Beautiful bands, by the way. There's double bands. Uh, as I smoke down, I'll take them off. But, uh, yeah. So here we go. The Opus X Lost City. <laughs> of course. I'm out of fuel. I'll be right back. Alright, so I grabbed the lighter here, but I think I'm going to go with matches. So let's, uh, let's try that. Almost there. Okay. So, for the purists out there, matches. It's where it's at. Unless it's windy out. So, My first uh, impression, let's get a time too, it's 9.31 a.m. on Thanksgiving. Uh, this way you see how long this is going to take uh, to smoke. But um, my first impression is uh, just a lot of pepper and, and wood and it's spicy. It's, it's pretty bold right out of the gate here. It's a very strong uh, flavored cigar. ton of wood it's like really in your face kind of wood flavor going on and like I said very spicy I got that kind of um, the spicy flavor but not so much the tingle 
you know what I mean? When you get that like pepper, especially when you first light a lot of different cigars, you get that like kind of a tingling, you know, peppery, zesty thing going on, you know, with your lips. And it, it, I don't have that. I have the flavor from that, but it's not like super spicy in the mouth. You know what I mean? It's much smoother, which is pretty interesting because uh, I would kind of expect that, that kind of bite that comes with that flavor. But it just wood, crazy amount of wood. So, uh, yeah. You can see it is cold out here. Hmm. Interesting. Just strong. That's really the the biggest thing I can uh, I can tell you right now is it's a strong cigar. Uh, I don't know about the uh, you know nicotine level. You know if the body of the cigar is uh, um, or the strength is as strong as the body. The body is very strong. I don't know about the strength yet, but I can I can kind of imagine it will be. So this might have been a mistake having it <laughs> this early, but we'll see. So I'm going to uh, to sit back. I may or may not change my coat because it is freezing out here. <laughs> it's a high 20s. Uh, it's like 28 or 29 degrees Fahrenheit right now, and uh, it is cold for me. So, like I said, may uh, may do a coat change, a little wardrobe change here, but I'm going to sit out here and enjoy this on Thanksgiving. So, I'll see you guys soon. If something happens, change uh, flavor changes, or if I just uh, start smoking it down, we'll see what's up. All right, I'm back for a moment to read you a little excerpt from uh, Wikipedia on the Opus X. Or this is on the Fuente uh, page. It says, 2004, Cuban-American actor and director Andy Garcia contacted Carlos Fuente Jr. seeking to film scenes for the film The Lost City in the Fuente tobacco fields. The film was scheduled to shoot in July of that year, however, a time after the crop had already been harvested. To provide a setting for the film, 15 acres were planted by Fuente in tobacco during what would ordinarily have been the off-season. The resulting special crop harvested, cured, and manufactured for the first release in 2009 was very successful, marketed as the Opus X Lost City Edition. Five Viatolas of this uh, special edition were produced uh, in 2010 with very limited productions ranging from 4,000 to 12,000 cigars per size. So that's it. And I know it might seem like a lot, but it's not. You're talking about a worldwide uh, stockpiling that's nothing. Fuente is also known for quality control. The Fuente family packs their cigar boxes with an advanced two-way humidification device, blah, 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 blah. So there you go. That's the, uh, the quantity for these is about 4,000 to 12,000 per size that's available. And this was also rated, you know, world's best cigar, I think, multiple years as well. So let's say if you were going to uh, Google it, let's see what that says. All right, Opus X Lost City. This comes up. It says one of the most sought after and, whoops, one of the most sought after and hardest to find cigars in the world, the Opus X, is the pinnacle of perfection when it comes to ultra premium cigars. Made in ultra small batches, the Lost City cigars incorporate rare five year old aged tobacco grown on the Chate de la Fuente farm. Blah, blah, blah. You can read the rest for yourself, but uh, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. So, that's it for now. I've had no uh, flavor changes or anything like that. Just getting a ton of that smoke. A ton of our smoke. <laughs> it is smoking quite heavily. There's there's plenty of smoke. The draw is absolutely perfect. I mean, it, it's it's that perfect sweet spot where I mean, too light, you're you're bringing in too much. I can have a nice easy draw the whole time. Get plenty of smoke in my mouth. I don't have to struggle for it. It's not too tight or anything like that. Um, and obviously, the burn so far is a little wonky, but that could be because. I lit it with matches. I'm not going to touch this up or anything. We're going to see if that self-corrects or not. But, um, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. And, uh, again, with the uh, the burn here, this is usually why I toast a foot first. Um, I don't think this is going to be a problem just because I know the construction on these are probably really good. But uh, with a lot of other cigars, if you start off like that, you're going to have a problem. It's just going to keep tunneling or canoeing or, or just uh, sticking to one side, and you're going to have to touch it up. Um, we'll see with this one. Of course, the ash fell. <laughs> All right. We are... Let's see, what time is it? We're almost a half hour in. It's 
and um, it's actually burning pretty slow. I don't know if you saw that, but it was about an inch uh, ash on there. And I wasn't kidding when I said it's cold out here. I'm wearing <laughs> gloves and my crazy hat. Um, but it's keeping me warm. I'm enjoying this. I will say right now that I'm not going to wait until uh, Thanksgiving to try the other one. I will have it in the middle of summer when I can uh, sit outside in nice weather and really enjoy it. Um, not to say I'm not enjoying myself right now, but it's cold out here. 28 degrees to me, and I think it dropped down to 27. Um, that's no joke to me. Maybe where you live, that's, uh, you know, t-shirt weather, but no, I'm pretty cold. But anyway, um, as far as the, uh, the flavors, it's the same type of flavor going on, but it's like super creamy and super smooth, all right? That, that kind of peppery thing in the beginning, even though I didn't have the, uh, um, the spiciness on the lips, like the, the sensation of spicy, uh, the flavor was there. The flavor is kind of gone now. It's just like straight wood. Um, but I don't know specifically what, I can't say it's like cedar or like a light wood or dark wood or anything like that. It's just, it's just kind of woody to me. But it's like you have that creaminess to it and it actually tastes a little bit like cream. Uh, it's really, really good and super smooth. And the construction is still perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all flavor and there's just no bite in your mouth. There's It's like... I don't know, it's, it's hard to describe. If you smoked a lot of cigars, you just know that you get that kind of little bit of a tingly sensation, sometimes the tip of your tongue, on your lips, sometimes you get a little bit of a burning thing going on in your throat. This is nothing, it's like, it's like there's no actual smoke there. You know what I mean? I think some of that is like the smoke irritation. You know, it's maybe irritating you, and physically having smoke in the mouth, but it's not happening whatsoever right now with this. Um, it's just, like I said, super smooth. Uh, strength, nothing. I mean, I, I, it's, I don't want to say it's a mild cigar, but it's not, I'm not like getting jittery or, or sweating or anything like that. No nicotine effects whatsoever, but it's still early yet. It's only a half an hour in. Being that, it, you know, I've been smoking this for a half an hour already, I, I'm going to guess this is probably going to be like an hour and a half smoke. Who knows, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little less. I don't know where I'm going to actually stop. It just depends on how strong it gets, you know, but we will see. And actually pretty soon I'm going to take the band off. I might take both bands off just, just because, because I want to put my gloves back on and just enjoy it later. And I have to take them back off, take the bands off. But we'll see. Just, uh, I don't know, it's really enjoyable. It's very, it's very reminiscent of a lot of the Cubans that I've had. You know what I mean? It's, it's just like that straight wood flavor. Um... Only the Cubans have never really had that creaminess to it. They've always been kind of a dry finish. This is like, I don't know, it's a little bit sweeter, like a sweeter wood. And it kind of reminds me of like um, when you have things, especially with different types of craft beer and stuff or, um, you know, other, other drinks, anything that has an oak barrel aged thing to it, it has that type flavor, that little bit of like, I don't want to say smoky because that's uh, it's not smoky. It's not really charred wood. It's it's just kind of maybe a little bit more on the oaky side as far as wood goes, but not quite the flavor of how oak smells. Uh, you know, it's hard to explain, but the best thing I can tell you, it's just it's a sweet, creamy wood flavor. That's that's the majority of what's going on here. There's some other stuff going on that maybe I can't um, explain well or interpret properly, but. I can definitely tell you that. It is sweet, creamy wood. It's very enjoyable. It really is nice. So, anyway, just gonna sit back and try to stay warm and, and keep smoking on this thing and I'll give you an update if something changes. See you guys soon. All right. I'm back for a moment because I'm going to take the bands off now. I have no idea what time it is because my phone died. I had to bring it inside. So, uh, let's see if this is going to slide off or not. Ooh, I got lucky. I got lucky. I like sliding these off as opposed to peeling them off because I do save them. I kind of flatten them out. Let's see about the other one. Now the other one's loose, so that shouldn't be a problem. Well, it might be easier to slide it the other way. I'm quick about it. Now let's, let's tap the ash off. There we go. So 
Check out the bands off. All right. So I want to say it's like um, you know ten after ten or something like that, maybe quarter after. Flavor still totally the same. Super creamy, super smooth. Um, I mean that, that's it. It's just a lot of wood. That's it. It's like just really creamy wood. Like I said, there's other stuff going on there, but it's so slight that I'm not going to just start guessing and making stuff up, you know? What I know for sure is wood and cream, and uh, it's quite enjoyable. It's a lot easier to smoke without gloves on. I've learned that as well. <laughs> Although my hands are cold. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep smoking. And uh, by the time I'm... Uh, I'm, you know, down by the bottom here and almost done. I'm sure my phone will be done so I can get a, an accurate time check because I am curious how long this is going to last. Um, some people have said this thing lasted two hours. Some people said it lasted an hour. It's quite a difference there. So I guess it just depends. All right. It's getting hot and ashy and nasty. Little old nub is what's left. It's one of those things where, like, it's such a special cigar, and it's <laughs> it's so limited. I don't want to waste any, but uh, I probably should have put it out like maybe five, ten minutes ago, because the last the last like I would say at least five minutes have just been like it's too hot. It's too hot, too close. But anyway, so I'm gonna let that put that to the side, let that go out by itself. Let's do a time check. This is a uh, 10:55. Um. So what time did I start? Nine, nine thirty something, over an hour. Almost an hour and a half, somewhere around that range. Um, it was very, very enjoyable up until the last five minutes, <laughs> but that's that's my own fault. Like I said, I don't. It's hard because like, especially if you if you don't usually smoke cigars, you know, and you, you smoke a cigar and like let's say you're halfway through and you're not enjoying it that much anymore, it's done. Just because the cigar isn't smoked as much as it could be smoked doesn't mean you have to smoke it. You should put it out or stop smoking as soon as you're not enjoying it anymore. You know what I mean? Um, but like I said, it's it just because it's such a, a special stick, I didn't want to want to waste any. But anyway, so um, overall, I really enjoyed it. <clears throat> I will tell you, I definitely feel a little bit of a uh, nicotine thing going on. So uh, you should, probably shouldn't have it for breakfast like I just did. <laughs> but um, after a nice meal, I don't think it would be a problem. It's not like a super powerhouse or anything. It's just uh, it's, it's enough. Of a, of a nicotine uh, kick to uh, to not have it super early or to have it on an empty stomach. Flavors, as you guys uh, heard before, I mean, it started out with a little bit of that peppery thing going on, tons of wood, um, and then soon after I started, maybe like 15, 20 minutes, whatever it happened to be, um, the pepper flavor died off, like almost completely, and it was just basically just wood and cream, and it was super smooth, like the majority of the smoke. Um, very delightful, very nice. I would compare it to the Cubans that I've had, only the Cubans were never really like creamy. This was super creamy. So uh, it is a special cigar. It does have a, a unique flavor. I don't know if um, growing the tobacco out of the normal growing season is what contributed to some of the flavors going on here, but it is kind of unique. I will say if you've never had a, uh, a Cuban cigar, if you're in the US and you don't have accessibility to Cubans, this is the one to get. This is the closest thing flavor-wise to a Cuban that, that I can think of, really, that of all the cigars that I've had. It's very woody, um, but it is a little bit different um, with the cream aspect. I, uh, I enjoy wood, woody-type cigars every now and again. It's not my favorite, though. So, like, even though this is a, you know, wonderful cigar, is it my favorite cigar? No. I tend to like uh, some of the chocolatey uh, cigars, some of the ones with like leather and, and just really unique stuff. The wood thing to me, I mean, there's a lot of different cigars that have that woody flavor. A lot of the Fuentes just in general um, have a woody thing going on to me. And like I said, all the Cubans were kind of woody. It's it's not bad. It's a very enjoyable stick. Um, it's like a bucket list item. It's something, if you're into cigars, you have to try it just because. You know what I mean? Just because. But uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy it. I've had the experience, you know, I was very excited to try it. I finally tried one. Now it's kind of like, okay, whatever. You know what I mean? Um, I did trade for this. I, I didn't have to spend the $30 plus for it or spend $300 for a box of them just to get them. Uh, if you do have accessibility to get one of these and trying it, I definitely recommend it. Is it something I would have all the time, even if I could afford it? If I was a millionaire and I had, you know, cases of these things, 
it still wouldn't be my first choice. You know what I mean? A lot of people, a lot of people, well, I shouldn't say a lot of people. I should say there's definitely people out there with money who just like doing the, the best of the best. You know what I mean? Even if it's not the most enjoyable. Does that make sense? Like a lot of people feel like they have to enjoy the cigar because it is so, you know, uh, sought after, because it's so rare, because it's so expensive, it must be good. Not necessarily. Again, with the parallel to knives, just because a knife is super expensive or, you know, has really great quality to it, doesn't mean you're enjoying it as much as some of the cheaper stuff. And cigars is a great example of that. Some of my favorite cigars are the cheaper ones. You know, I can enjoy a $6 cigar more than I can enjoy this one just because of the flavors that it's providing me. So that is my uh, opinions. Uh, if you've had this cigar, a lot of you guys out there have tried this. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of it. So anyway, have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care.